please don't tell me what to do during Advent. That was the opening line of a letter to the editor of a Catholic newspaper a few years ago. It was written by a Catholic woman, a married woman, who worked full time and she had several children. She admitted in a letter to the editor that she dreaded coming to church on the first Sunday of Advent. Why? Because she was afraid of what her priest would say in his homily. I'm sure many of you can relate to that. She asked in her letter, please don't tell me what to do during Advent. Her letter continued, Father, she was addressing her pastor, you don't understand how tired I am. We just got through Thanksgiving. Do you know what it's like to spend 12 hours cooking a meal that your family devours in 12 minutes? <laughs> the woman continued, Father, you don't understand how tired I am. Between now and Christmas, my family and friends expect me to do the following. Decorate the house. Buy and wrap presents. Bake cookies. Attend and host parties. Send cards to people that we never talk to. Take the children to see Santa. Deal with my in-laws. Worry about credit card debt. Referee family squabbles. All the while working full time and not strangling anybody. The woman continued, Frankly, Father, you don't know how much stress I feel in these weeks leading up to Christmas. Because if I, the mom, don't do all these things, my family will take out their frustrations on me. She continued, that's why I dread coming to church on the first Sunday of Advent, because you, Father, will stand in that pulpit and you will tell me that Advent is a time of peaceful, spiritual waiting. And I want to throw a hymnal at you. <laughs> you will tell us that Advent is a time for quiet prayer. Well, I dare you, Father, to come to my house for one evening. You will say that Advent is a time for spiritual preparation. You will tell me that I need to add time to my daily prayer time. You will tell me that I need to go to confession, that I need to care for the sick, that I need to take care of those who are needy, and I should in the meantime cure the lepers, raise the dead, and pay the national debt. Father, please don't tell me what to do during Advent. I'm already too busy, too exhausted, too worried. Don't make it worse. Through Christ our Lord, amen. <laughs> Does anyone here sympathize with this mother? You want to raise your hand? Frankly, after reading this article several years ago, I cringed. And I cringed because I was guilty of doing exactly what this mother complained about. I went back and I looked at all my old homilies, and they are full of advice about what you need to do during Advent. The spiritual activities, the charitable activities, the extra effort that, so that we can prepare the way of the Lord. It never dawned on me that I was creating more work for all of you, my dear friends, who are already too busy at this time of the year. So much of our Advent language is about preparation, waiting, getting ready. And we Americans assume that preparation means more work and more busyness. 
And so today, I try to read today's scriptures through the eyes of a busy mom, a busy dad, a busy family. I try to listen to the words of Jesus through the experience of people who are already wondering how they are going to get everything done by Christmas Eve. Our readings today speak of two profound truths. The first truth is this, that history is not meaningless, that this world has meaning and purpose. It's headed towards the God who created everything. And just as our lives here on earth do not last forever, this whole creation will pass away. We call that the second coming of Christ, or the final judgment. We will see Christ face to face. Everything and everyone will be united in his heart. Christ is coming again. The second truth of today's readings is this, that we don't know when any of that is going to happen. Christmas is a celebration of the first coming of Christ, his birth in Bethlehem. Yet in Advent, we Christians also understand that Christ is coming again someday. Now in previous Advent homilies, this would be the point when I would start to list all of the things that you need to do during this season so that you are more prepared to celebrate Christmas so you're more prepared to celebrate the second coming of Christ. In previous Advent homilies, I would have told you that you need to pray more, that you need to come to church during the week, to go to confession, to be more generous, and to work for justice. And all of those things are well and good, but you may have said that each year silently saying to me, please don't add anything more to my list this year. And then I realized that in today's gospel, that Jesus is asking us to do only one thing. And that one thing is stay awake. Stay awake. That means pay attention. Open your eyes. Be mindful. As we prepare for the coming of Christ, I don't think Christ is asking us to do more things. I think he's asking us to pay attention while we do what we have already planned to do. In other words, you don't have to do more stuff before Christmas. And this could be your most spiritually enriching advent if you simply change the way that you do what you're already planning to do by staying awake. In today's gospel, Jesus says that the coming of the Lord will happen while people are doing ordinary stuff, eating and drinking, loving and working. God comes into our human history while we are busy with our daily lives. And so Jesus says, stay awake, pay attention. In the midst of doing all that you are doing between now and Christmas Eve, open your eyes, open your heart, pay attention to the fact that Christ is already with you while you're doing all that you are doing. Let me get specific. After you have decorated your tree and you stand back to admire it, think about the other trees that you have seen, especially the ones from your childhood. And while you're standing there looking at your tree, admiring your handiwork, stay awake at that moment and just thank God for something as simple and beautiful as a tree with lights on it. 
when you see a smile on a child's face or the joy of their anticipation, stay awake. And in that moment, thank God for childlike wonder. When you bake the cookies that your grandmother taught you how to bake, and you bite into the warm, gooey goodness, well, take another bite into the warm, gooey goodness, and then thank God for the people who love you. When you write or when you receive a Christmas card, stay awake, and in that moment, say a prayer of thanksgiving to God for the people who have touched your life. When you go shopping, when you buy a gift card for a St. Vincent de Paul outreach, in that moment, stay awake. Thank God in that very moment that you have resources to buy things and a warm, dry place to lay your head. When you hear a Christmas carol, stay awake. When you sing Silent Night, or when you hear Perry Como sing Silent Night, or Nat King Cole sing Silent Night, or Bing Crosby sing Silent Night, stay awake. Thank God for sending His Son Jesus into our crazy, messy, busy world. Do you see my point? I'm not asking you to add anything else to your busy schedule. I'm simply asking you to stay awake to the fact that Christ is already present in every activity that's already on your Advent schedule. You don't need to do more things to find Christ this Christmas. Just pay attention to the Christ who's already there in everything you do in everyone you meet. Just practice an alert discipline of gratitude during these weeks of Advent. Thank God in all that you experience. See Christ in everyone. And maybe you will realize that we are not waiting to meet Christ at some far off point in the future we are meeting Christ at every busy moment of every busy day.